In this tutorial, we will create a short establishing shot of an alien planet using the CC Sphere effect in After Effects 2014. We will use a small selection of 2D images. Uh, we will create various blending modes, masks and other compositing techniques to bring everything together. And in the end, we should have a, a short clip that looks something like this. Okay, so to create this scene, the only imagery you'll need is um, something like this. So I've got a star field for the background. The planet itself is made up of this image alone um, for the uh, main terrain. In Photoshop, I've then used the select color range to select all the shades of blue and turquoise for the oceans and water. This will enable me to get a reflective um, look on that. Um, and uh, everything in white is uh, is visible and everything in, in black is actually an alpha channel or transparent um, and then I can uh, in Photoshop get um, like a satellite view of a city at night and then use the mask shape of the oceans to delete um, parts of the city so the city now is obviously only on the land not the ocean and this will be visible on the dark side of the planet um, we can then put the clouds over the top of that and then an atmosphere as well and uh, there will be another tutorial on how to create a planet in Photoshop where you will learn how to create a, an atmosphere shape for your planet as well. And this has been saved as a PNG image um, to put over the top. And if you want to have a planet to moon then feel free to get an image of a desert or something like or a rock or something to use for the moon. Um, and asteroids if need be as well. Um, another tutorial will focus on how to create the broken moon um, that we see on the planet as well uh, using basically this image and that image there and as the ship passes the camera you'll see um, you get a nice dirty grungy effect on the lens and that's uh, what this image is for as well. And then there's obviously some sound effects from Star Wars and of Thunder that has been used as well. Okay, so to get started, we're going to open up After Effects. The first thing that you'll need to do um, is to save your work, and we need to set up auto save as well, because some of the things we do might cause After Effects to get a bit crashy. So I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to save my scene. And then I'm going to set up auto save, uh, which can only be done after you've sa saved your scene once. So you go to Edit, Preferences, Auto Save, and uh, make sure that Automatically Save Projects is checked. Depending on how much you trust your computer, uh, by default this is 20. I trust my computer out of about 10 minutes. Many of you may only want to choose 5 minutes, depending on how stressed you get. Um, and Auto Save should now be set up. Uh, the more often you have your Auto Save, the more often you'll see the uh, probably a 2 second window appear saving your work if you have a solid state hard drive. Okay, uh, the next thing we're going to do is double click on our project area on the left hand side and go and import our images. Okay, I'm probably going to want to import all of this um, except for the moon and uh, those rocks because they're for another, another day. I right, go ahead and import these. Okay, we now need to create our first composition. Let's go to Composition, New Composition, and um, the composition name, we could rename it to Master, and this would be the final um, composition, so Master Planet Shot. Um, it needs to be 1920 by 1080 to start with, frame rate 25 frames per second, and a duration of 15 seconds will be absolutely fine and uh, the background color can be black as well. We can then hit OK. We're now going to drag our star field image into our layer section down here. Your star field image should, if you zoom out, should be much larger than your workspace. This is fine. I don't want it to be quite that big. Um, so I'm going to drop down into the transform settings for the star field and go from click on the scale and type in 50% in there. I can now drag in the continents layer above that. Oh, I'll drag it into my uh, uh, workspace. 
Now there's no need to resize your uh, continents layer. Um, the effect we're going to have on it now will resize it for us. So once you've dragged in your continents layer, make sure it's selected and then go to Effect, Perspective, CC Sphere. And it will immediately change that image into a sphere in the middle of your uh, workspace there. And the moment we applied that uh, to our image, um, it's obviously brought up the Effect Controls tab, uh, which has now replaced the Project tab over here. And we can expand some of these drop-down sections out to see um, what control we can have over this. So again, you can change uh, the angle of the light, um, the, obviously the direction of it. You can click on the rotation and change the way that the planet is orientated. Um, the main orientation that we're going to be interested in is rotate Y. Um, to avoid seeing the ugly poles of the planet where the image is all pinched together, I'll only bother rot using the rotate Y. And again, even, even then, if you do it too much, you will see a seam down your image. And that's, of course, you have a tileable image. Um, so again, I'm going to try and avoid that when rotating the planet. But it shouldn't be rotating that fast for that to be a concern to us. So I'm going to hit undo on that. Before we start animating this planet, there's a few settings I'm going to change first of all. I'm going to change the radius from 200 to 450. If you use the transform uh, scale command down under your layer here, you'll find that your image becomes blurry if you resize it using the scale down here. If you resize it using the, scale, uh, the radius up here, it keeps it um, in a um, pixel perfect basically and you can zoom in 100% uh, full quality and you can see it doesn't look too bad. The other thing we need to do which will help us when we start importing our clouds or mask layers for the oceans um, that are PNG or transparent, we need to tell it to render only the outside of the image. This means that when we eventually have transparent images in here, we're not going to be able to see through the oceans or whatever through to the back of the planet. Um, obviously, this is a JPEG image with no transparency, so it doesn't have any effect at the moment. But we'll shortly copy this effect control onto new layers to quickly give them a spherized look as well. So change radius to 450 and the render to outside. We'll also go down to shading and drag the ambient from 10 to 0. Uh, the ambient, if you just play around with that, will kind of control how much uh, the shadows have an effect on the planet. Um, but I want it just to be 0. Now that I'm happy with the way the planet looks, I'm going to um, go ahead and animate this. Um, so I'm going to make sure my time slider is at zero seconds. I'll go down to Effects, CC Sphere, and go to Rotation. And then with my time slider at zero seconds, I'm just going to use the Rotate Y. These are obviously the same exact controls as we have up here. Um, but this will allow me to see where the keyframes are, and I, I do prefer to edit most of my imagery down here as opposed to the effect controls whenever I'm animating. So I'm going to use the rotate Y and find a good starting position for my planet. Again, I want to avoid seeing this ugly seam here, so I'm just going to drag it to somewhere about there. Gives me some interesting uh, landmass shapes. And then to activate keyframing or animation for this, I'll click on the stopwatch over here. And I can see it's put a little diamond in at zero seconds. I'll move my time slider now to eight seconds. I only want my animation to be about eight seconds long. You could do more if you wanted, but eight seconds is probably more than enough time you would need to put this into a showreel anyway. At eight seconds, I will now drag the rotation Y. Um, so the planet does move a little bit perhaps like this. Um, I want to see how fast this is going, so I'm going to preview this really quick. It's super important that you're happy with the rotation speed of the planet. So I've just gone up to here, this preview uh, box, and I've clicked on the um, play button there. And as it's, I've clicked on that, it's very slowly buffering in this animation. And if I expand this out a bit more, It usually says uh, if you've got a room, uh, red, a red thing saying not real time or something like that. 
um, because it is rendering. Um, and once you've got a green bar filled up there all the way up to eight seconds, that means it's put this animation now into your computer's memory. And now when you hit the play button again, it will be in real time. And so I can see that the planet's not spinning too fast, um, but I, I am noticing that it is going. And that's quite nice. So I've rotated my planet with a starting uh, position of 94 degrees and I've rotated it all the way around to uh, 53 degrees.